Okay, welcome. In this clip, we're going to go over one of the most important constraints related to entity relationship diagramming. A constraint is a consequential way in which the diagram represents reality that's going to have implications for the way our database looks subsequently. Okay. Whether that's clear at this point or not, uh, it should be. It should emerge over the course of our conversation. Okay, so at this point, you should be familiar with the basic operations of entity relationship diagramming. So we've got a relationship, and a relationship relates to, in this case, or sometimes more, entities. And so our entities here are employee and department, and our relationship is works for. Okay, so we have a binary relationship. It's between two entities, employee and department. So what does cardinality, which is what we're talking about here, what does it mean? It equals how much at most of one entity given another. Okay, so, but before we get into that, let's review the way that an entity relationship diagram relates to a simple declarative English sentence. Okay, so there's two ways we can read this entity relationship diagram. Uh, from left to right and from right to left, active voice in English and passive voice in English. Let's look at that. So we can say, employees and part of my handwriting, work for departments. Okay, and that represents left to right. Okay, we can also say, and this is a little awkward, uh, as passive voice sentences often, often are, departments have working for them employees. And that is from the right to the left. Departments have working for them employees. Okay, And you might say, whoop-de-doo, we can read that both ways. But getting a firm grasp on that fact will be essential for understanding cardinality relationships. So let's redefine cardinality, because that's not very good definition anyway, in light of this new English sentence left to right. So cardinality, I'm going to abbreviate, equals how much at most. Okay, and so let's look at that. How much at most of one given the other? Okay, so getting rid of our... All right. So here's how we do it. Always start with the singular. And you could, we could start right to left, or we could start left to right. Let's start left to right, though, because it's a little more nat natural. For a given instance of an employee, an employee can work for, at most, how many departments? Okay, And that's a business rule. Uh, you know, at your organization, maybe you can only work at most at one department. Maybe in another organization, you can work at uh, for several simultaneously. So you know it's not implicit in the logic here. It's something that you need to know about the problem domain so that you can design a database appropriate to address it. But we'll just we'll just make some assumptions here. We say a given instance of an employee works for at most one department, and that's where we represent it. So that is one of our two cardinality considerations right here. Okay? And it could be that employees can work at multiple departments. If we were to say a given employee can work for at most multiple departments, we would represent this as N. Now it's worth pointing out in this case that an employee might in your organization 
be allowed to work for more than one department, but at most two. That's certainly possible, although we abstract out typically those specific numbers and worry only about one or greater than greater than one. Those are really the only two which we represent as an M or an N. Really, we're only worried about one and more than one. Let's go back to our original example, however, and say, given employee works for, at most, one department. Okay. So that's one of our two cardinality statements. If you've got a binary relationship, a relationship between two entities, you have two cardinality facts that you need to represent. The right to left cardinality statement is uh, less a question of business rules and procedures and more a question of common sense. So let's look at, look at that. For a given department, that department can have, working for it, at most how many employees? At most one employee or at most more than one employee? Well, a department with one employee is not a very big, important, or fun department. So it only goes to say that a given department can have working for it many employees. Okay? Would it mean the same thing for us to have? No, I don't. Thank you anyway. Would it mean the same thing for this N to be over here and this one to be over here? No, certainly, certainly not. These, the location of this value determines the meaning of the value. And we, we have an arbitrary convention for representing cardinality. There are other ways to represent cardinalities. If you go off and get a database design job, your organization may pick a different convention. Uh, there are some conventions related to little lines here, uh, whether they're multiple, sometimes you see crow's feet like this. They all mean the same thing. Our convention is going to be what's called look across, or what I just stepped you step you through. So if you want to say the cardinality for how many departments an employee can work at, you look across. And the reason I like the look across convention is because it's consistent with interpreting the sentence. An employee works for, at most, one department. Employee works for, at most, one department. Consistently read left to right. Department has working for it, at most, many employees. Any convention is fine. This one, I think, is easier to understand because of that correspondence between the left and the right. We all have to be working under the same set of assumptions, though, and so this is how you have to represent your cardinalities in this class, even if you're used to some other convention, because otherwise we're talking two different languages, we're using two different sets of representations, and it would cause a great deal of confusion, okay? So there is our first example, our first exposure to the notion of cardinality and the idea that these sentences can be interpreted left to right and right to left. Uh, so we've also stepped you through the mechanism for assigning these cardinalities. Uh, as a sneak preview of the next constraint that we'll take up. Notice that I keep under, underlining at most. We can flip cardinality on its head and say how many at a minimum. So we could say a given employee works for at a minimum zero departments or one department. And what that's equivalent to asking is, is it possible for there to exist an employee who works for zero departments, who doesn't have a department assigned to him or her. But uh, before we get into that, uh, too far ahead of ourselves and the potential for confusion, go ahead and play this through again a time or two. Do the cardinality-related homework. Let me know if you have any questions around cardinality, and then we'll take on the participation constraint, which is basically worrying about at minimum instead of at most. Okay? Study hard, uh, stay in touch, don't be a stranger, and uh, we will see you again real soon. Thanks.